Okay, so I'm sitting and uh, moderator, shall I leave my webcam off? Do you know, I'll, I'll turn it on and try it, uh, see if there's a problem. Okay, let's start my webcam. Here we go. Well, who knows why? Uh, we, we ran a sound check and everything was fine, but that didn't take too long. And, um, and maybe you've had time to kind of like look at this warm up and get relaxed, just as this, this image suggests. So I'm glad you can hear me now, isn't that great? And I'm, what I'm gonna do is play a word association game with you. So I'd like to do this. I will say a word, right? And you just think, what's the first other, you know, what's the first word you think of which associates with that? So if, for example, if I say strawberries, you might type into the chat box, sweet, red, fruit, yummy, something like that. Okay, so my first word for you is well-being. So I say well-being. What words do you immediately think of related to well-being? So great, we have lifestyle, happy. Uh, we have Diane, I can't read your names, they're going so quickly. Spa, relaxation, lucky you if you have a spa. I saw um, the word uh, beer, I like that. If we can combine beer and spa, that sounds like a pretty good day for me anyway. Right, peace, happiness, holistic, health, lots of words. Okay, and now we'll try another word, okay? So, well-being, finish. Let us move on to my next word. I say project. What words do you think of? Project. And I'm going to type. So project, we have plan. We have collaboration, tiring, creative, organized activity, collaboration again, long, says Maria. Gamze says task, Rudy says work, Belen says planning, stress says, uh, I don't know if that's Yuda or Jauda or Yauda, apologies, surname Mensi, teamwork, complicated, assignment goal. Okay, so do you know what? I am going to turn my webcam off because it's pretty slow. <laughs> it's just, uh, so, so let me stop my webcam just because the most important thing is that you hear my voice and can hear the slides. Uh, and let's move on. Uh, my webcam is not stopping, but let's move on to the next slide. Uh, so here's the agenda. This is what we will do. First, we will look at, um, I will. I do want to stop sharing my webcam. Uh, we will look at what PBL is. Okay, and we'll look at the benefits and challenges. So, um, and what I really want to focus on are different types of project. All right, good, the webcam's gone off. And we'll talk um, within that about how to implement PBL, which is project-based learning. Then at the end, I'll leave you with some further reading. So, um, uh, you know, the, my, the main part will actually be on different types of project, as you will see. So let's uh, get along with things and have a look and see uh, what projects are. So we have a definition for you, and this comes from our focus paper called Project-Based Learning, which we'll send you a link to download later. So what is project-based learning? Let me read this quote. Project-based learning is a student-centered form of learning that involves students spending sustained periods of study time um, exploring and attempting to solve real-life problems. So already in that definition, we have some, of, some definitions of, of what a project involves, right? or PBL, project-based learning, sustained, uh, exploring usually a question or an, an issue, attempting to solve real-life problems. So that link to real life, um, the authenticity is important too. Now, when we talk about project-based learning, obviously the key word is project. And project is a very difficult word to define. Hello, Croatia, by the way. So let's think about what a project is. So on your screens now, uh, you should see a picture, and it's a picture of some drawings that some students have done. Uh, and what happened is this project is called cocktails. Each student has chosen a different non-alcoholic cocktail, 
and they have drawn a picture of it and written some text about how to make the cocktail. So I'm going to ask you, um, is this project-based learning? If you think it's yes, this, this is a project, this can be part of project-based learning, type yes. If you think no, it's not a project, type no into the chat box, please. Now, um, someone's type no sound their video. I think you do have sound, but I have turned my video off just to save band space because uh, the voice is, is the most important thing. Okay. So let's see. Yes is a no. So some people say most are saying yes. Yes, because it's about real life. And some are saying no. Uh, and someone says, uh, Margarita says it depends. Yeah, I think it depends. It's a good answer. Now we're getting some more no's. Olga, Olga Nazarova says no, because there's no co cooperation. Interesting. So is it a project or not? It's very, very difficult to say yes or no. But I'm going to say that maybe that this might not be a project. And I'm going to show you why. Yeah, Vanessa, I'm, uh, I'm afraid it is a bit like listening to radio. <laughs> but as long as you can see the slides, that's OK. Uh, so let me read. Uh, and this is a, a blog post uh, about projects by a teacher and trainer called Olja Marilus. If I pronounced that incorrectly, I'm, I apologize. So Olja says, I visit a lot of classrooms around the world. And teachers proudly point out posters on the walls and say, look at my students' projects. So, you know, the teachers are saying, look at my students' projects. But are they really projects? So um, what we're going to see next is another, is this, let's see, yes, thank you. Although the work looks very nice, I would argue that it is not a project. This work usually involves a piece of writing with a picture. What worries me is that the text often seems to be directly copied or merely cut and pasted from the internet. And she says, such work may have some merits. But um, she has two main worries. One is that students should be discouraged from plagiarism, just copying and pasting. And two is that students are not getting involved in the challenges and satisfaction of what a full-blown full blown project consists of. It's not very interesting. So that's, that's uh, something to consider. What many teachers call projects are not really projects. Okay. So now we have to think, what is a full-blown project? And it's very, very difficult to define. So one useful way to define what a project is, is to list the key elements that a project should contain. And this is my favorite way of defining a project, right? What are its key elements? So um, projects should include elements such as those listed here on the slide. OK, so you can see the list. Now, you can read more about this when you um, access and download the project-based learning focus paper from Oxford um, at the end of this session. But I'll just uh, you know, run through maybe three of them. So first, we have a, a one element of a project should be a challenging problem or question. So projects should have clear goals, which are based around addressing real life problems or questions that students find meaningful and relevant. Um, to their lives. Oh, and I see uh, our moderators put a picture of me there instead. That's a very good idea. Um, my, the picture is uh, a lot more shaved than I am uh, really, and I'm looking a bit better than I do today. So I think that's better. Okay, next, a project should be public. So yes, the end of the project should be some kind of product uh, which should be public. It could be a performance, a presentation, maybe a video or a document, something like that. Or it could be, yes, a poster. Uh, a project should develop key knowledge and skills. So these key knowledge areas and skills, skills could include critical thinking, problem solving, communication, collaboration, which many of you said, cooperation, and self-management. So. What we look for is that projects contain as many of these elements as possible. Now, to summarize, right, 
uh, a total kind of project purist. So someone who's really, really kind of an expert in projects may want to include all of these key elements in order for it to really be a true project. But for me, I think it's very difficult to say that is a project, that is not a project. I think you cannot really draw a clean line. For me, you have to just make your project as project-like or project-y as you can, because we all have um, practical considerations. Our curricula, our course aims, time restrictions, resource restrictions, how old your students are. So what I'm going to share in this session are many different types of projects, and some are kind of easier or less projecty than others, and some are very, very projecty, but they do take more time and take up more resources. Okay, so that's what project-based learning is, that's what a project is. Let's move on to the benefits and challenges of projects. So, um, here are five benefits of project-based learning, because when done very successfully, project-based learning can have quite a significant positive impact on our students and on our classroom environment. So this slide here shows five benefits of project-based learning that I have chosen from the focus paper, which lists and describes many more. So if we take a look at the, the first one, for example, I won't go through the whole list, uh, but one of the, the benefits is that students become problem solvers. Students will face difficulties. They'll have to learn how to approach, how to break down, how to solve problems, and they will have to do this with a good degree of independence. They cannot always ask the teacher to do things for them. So overcoming these challenges can have a huge impact on students' motivation and self-esteem. Uh, next, we have broader learning. So in a project, students will they'll learn a lot more than language. They will learn how to collaborate with each other how to negotiate with each other, all useful skills. And you know, as they explore their topic, they'll learn about the topic, so that's information. And um, you know, if they're doing a research project, they'll have to look at different types of information, different sources, and evaluate which ones are, are most reliable, most credible. And you can see some other benefits of projects. So uh, you know, I'm not gonna go into every single one, but uh, what I'm going to ask you is, uh, as the slides have disappeared and we hope they come back, I'm going to ask you, this really does turn into a radio program now, can you type into your chat box, into the chat box, what do you think are uh, the, the key benefits of doing projects? Whether you have experience of delivering projects or doing them with your students or whether you um, would like to do projects. So what do you think are the key benefits of doing projects? So please type your thoughts into the chat box and then hopefully uh, we'll have some slides coming back. So okay, so moderator, I, I cannot see any slides, but you're so, I cannot see any slides, so hopefully you're sorting that out. Yeah. Indeed, moderator, I think I might be, um, but here we go, something is happening. So, but anyway, let's read out your, uh, your thoughts. So we have interactions, team spirit, uh, DLIP says collaboration through communication, and we have critical thinking skills, sharing the workload, self-confidence, internalizing efforts, all of this makes students more independent. So um, just just to moderate a moderator note, I don't know if you can see my slides, but I cannot see my slides. But what I'm going to do is is now talk about challenges, right, of uh, of projects. So um, moving on to challenges, what I'm going to get you to do, right, is to just type into the chat box. So so we understand the benefits, but I want to be realistic. Imagine that you want to do a project. What are the main challenges uh, that you would face? Okay, so let's type that into the chat box. And I'll, I'll just sort of note to my moderator, how's it going with the slides? So what are the challenges?
Now, moderator, as, as uh, participants type the challenges, would you advise me to, to close down and come in again? And let's see. So I'd like you to see the, uh, to type the challenges. So I see, you'll still see many benefits being typed. And I, I uh, uh, moderator, I think I have no choice but to close down and come back in again. Okay, so that's okay. You can uh, you can help the the participants to type down the challenges first. And we, we started talking about challenges. Excellent. It's good to be back. So I have a, yeah, I've already asked you this. So let's look at the challenges. So chat box question, what do you think are the biggest challenges to using project-based learning in your teaching context? So we have, let's see, group organization. Yes. So uh, how do you organize groups? Usual advice is to is to try and mix the abilities up, right? So you have stronger and weaker students together in a group. Uh, they help each other. And teacher needs to make sure all students contribute for the project. So what we usually do there is assign students or let students assign themselves very, very clear roles in each project. Okay. Uh, but time consuming is perhaps the biggest challenge. So I see that both Tatiana and Xenija or Xenia uh, have written time consuming. So let's let's kind of um, show you a few challenges here. And um, moderator, shall we run a, a poll? Yeah, Could, is that okay? Let's run a poll. So what we have are some challenges of um, project-based learning. Okay. Uh, hold on, no, no, actually, not yet. Sorry. Uh, sorry, moderator, not yet. Let's delay that. And so, um, you know, here are five challenges. So I picked six, actually, which I see on the, the focus paper. So covering the syllabus is a challenge. How can you uh, make sure that you can connect the language that students are practicing in the project with what you're teaching in your syllabus? 
Now, some schools are very lucky. They can base their entire syllabus around a project, but not all schools have that good fortune. Uh, group dynamics can be a big challenge. So we have to take care that you know, some students don't dominate a group and prevent others from having a voice, right? And also that the workload is shared fairly between uh, uh, group members. And time constraints is time constraints is a big one. Project-based learning is definitely a time-consuming approach, right? And we have to balance how much time a project demands against what we have to do um, with teaching the rest of the syllabus. Okay, so this is this is the key part of the session, right? So um, even if I drop out of connection after this, the most important part is this, because um, most of what I'm saying in in this session you can read more about in our focus paper, project-based learning. But I'm putting in something a bit different here, which you won't find in the focus paper, which is different types of projects. So I'd like to show you different types of projects. Some of them may be new to you to introduce to you um, how you can begin planning them. And some are lighter and some are heavier. So I'm gonna show you a range. Uh, and it begins with types of projects which are not very projecty. So these are very light and these are first steps into projects and may be suitable for younger learners who, who cannot handle a full project and cannot manage themselves too well. Now the project purist, purist may say, well, this is not really a project, but I still think it's a good first step. And then we'll continue showing you different types of projects which are more and more projecty until we get a very projecty research-based project. Now you won't find the word project in a dictionary, but um, but I just made it up and I think it works for our purposes. Right, um, and what we'll also do is at each stage, I'll give you an example of a type of project and we'll measure just how projecty it is by looking at which of our key project elements they contain. So um, earlier I introduced you to this and I suggested that it was maybe not a project. Someone said it depends, right? But uh, but it's not very projecty. So remember this, which of these key elements do you think this project contains? So to start with, is there a challenging problem or question? Is there a challenging problem or question here, right? Draw a picture of a cocktail, a non-alcoholic one, and then write a little bit about how you make it. I would say no, right? Not a challenging real life problem or question to solve. Is there a public product? Maybe you could say, well, yes, because, you know, this is a product, isn't it? There's a poster. Key knowledge and skills. Are students developing Key, knowledge, key skills like critical thinking, problem solving, communication, collaboration, cooperation, self-management, not very much. Is there sustained inquiry? Not very much and so on, right? So I go through all of them, but I mean, you could argue that you could try and change the way you do this, like with group work and collaboration and making your own cocktail. So it could become more project-like or more projecty, but generally this is not really much of a project. Okay, so that's a good place to start. Okay, next, let's move on to mini projects. So uh, a mini project is a light, easy project. Uh, so Okay, so Peggy, can a moderator, can you just confirm I can see the first slide in the session now? Is that what you can see? Okay, so you know what? Um, I may as well say to you, next slide, please. Uh, sorry, I what I'm looking at. So we just need to check that we're synced. And indeed, um, let's see. So I'm moving through. So I'm going to hit this, right, where are we now? Moderator, can you tell me which slide you can see? 
Okay, so now can you see the cocktail slide? Excellent. Okay, good. We're, we're back in sync. Who knows what happened there? So and now I've just moved to a, a new slide. So we're going to look at mini projects. Is that right? Excellent. Good. So, so mini projects, I think, are So let's confirm what, what slides are we looking at now. Okay, and, and I'm just going to check. Did it, does it now move to showing uh, two mini projects in a book? Yes. Okay, good. So uh, I'm going to now tell you exactly what I see. So I'm looking at a picture uh, from a book called Fruits from Oxford Read and Discover. Yes, and uh, what we can see is some text. So um, mini projects, a good place to start uh, with projects is reading. Okay, and in reading, uh, I, I think, you know, if you're gonna do research with young students, maybe they're not able to, I don't know, go and look on the internet, all right? Maybe that's something that they cannot do. So books are a great source of research. Um, and independent research is key, uh, and books are a good resource. So for example, if students want to research how fruit grows for a project, they can search online, but if they're not able to do this, they can read a graded reader on fruit. Read about fruit and think about fruit, including this chapter on how plants grow. Now from this, we can make a very, very nice uh, project because at the back of the book, so I need to check, Peggy, can you now see what can you see now? Uh, can you see two proje mini projects one and two? Okay, let me see. Okay, I'm going to just share my screen with my moderator. Okay, Peggy. Let's see, can you see this? What are you seeing? Okay. And so let's have a look at, can you, yes? Okay, wonderful. So um, so we've got, students can read about fruit and we see how it grows, right? There's a diagram, there's information about how fruit grows. Uh, and next, what we can do is we can do a project. So at the back of these books, there are two mini projects. Now, I think mini projects are a really fantastic way of, uh, of getting your young students started on projects. And if we look at mini projects, let's take a look at the mini project on the left. Okay, so what we see here, students are going to keep a record and write, draw, draw and write the fruit that you eat in a week. So the vocabulary here is very simple. We have days of the week uh, and we have fruit including fruit juice. So, you know, for me, the, the, there is a challenging problem or question here. The, the question is, how much fruit do you consume, right, or eat? And the student, um, you know, let's look at sustained inquiry. The student researches and records over the course of a week. That's pretty sustained. So there's a research phase. Now, and they, they record and they write the fruit that they eat and how much they eat of it. Um, now, is there a public project, product, sorry, a public product? Well, not really, but it's very easy for me as a teacher to think, how can students um, represent the information from their research? So, you know, they could make a poster, which looks a bit like this page. They could um, make a, they could actually make, uh, you know, like some slides. They could make some infographics. There's lots they could do to, or they could just write a report. You know, this week I ate seven bananas, uh, three apples, and so on and so on and so on. Okay, so they can certainly make a public project out of this information. Is it authentic? Well, authenticity means that the project has genuine relevance to the lives of the students. And this does, it's about the students' lives, you know, and students will reflect on how much fruit they have, they, they've eaten, they can compare themselves with other students. And something you could do, which is very interesting, 
is if you have a school in another country running the same project, you can see how, you know, if, if students in one country, if students in one country, uh, if, okay, you can see how students in one country, if they can compare, yeah, they, okay, they can compare what they, uh, how much fruit they've eaten with the fruit that the uh, students in another country have eaten. Okay, so for me, that's a, the start of a very, very good project. Uh, now, moderator, can, if we're physically in the same room. Can I see what you can see? Just to check we're together. If you could tilt your screen, uh, because I need to see that I am seeing different types of project. Thank you very much. So those are, those are mini projects, and I think they're quite surprisingly projecty. And the main point is they're pretty easy for um, pretty easy for young students to get into, right? Uh, and you can expand them and make them as projecty or as quick and simple as you like. The next type of project is something that many teachers have not heard of. It's a series of linked activities. And I suggest this is pretty good at primary level as well. Um, now, you can make a project which is uh, like this. And uh, let me read. So Peggy, are you seeing a series of linked activities? Yeah, excellent. So um, in this project, it's called a series of worthwhile activities which are linked to form a tangible end product. So, you know, an end product could be something like a poster, a magazine, a podcast, a video. My favorite one is actually uh, a play, and I'll tell you why in a bit, right? Um, now, first, I'm going to show you the, the overall concept of how you can implement this series of activities type of project. So, uh, and don't worry, after this, the slides will show you a specific example, so you'll get a really good idea of what this means. So, the first stage for the, for the teacher is to choose the topic. Um, and I'm going to show you an example where the topic is... from me. So I'll let you look at this. I'm going to, uh, there's nothing I could do except mute. First I'll try muting. Oh, I'm, I've come back in. Okay. So a series of linked activities. So the first, so the student, the teacher chooses a topic. Then the next thing is the teacher decides what will the end product be. And, and the end product is usually some kind of performance or public product. So who will the audience be? Uh, where is the venue? And then the teacher has to decide how to integrate this product, uh, this project into the curriculum, right? Now then the teacher prepares a series of activities which lead up to an end product. And you're gonna assign some language and skills that students will learn for each activity. And you've got to prepare your resources, your materials, your storage space, if you have like physical materials. And then when you manage the project, you're going to introduce it to the parents, introduce it to your children or other students. You're going to give each student roles, go over the rules, the stages of the project, the materials needed, and you're going to monitor and evaluate it. So let me make this a bit more concrete for you. An example project description of a series of linked activities is this. So first the teacher chooses the topic, which is, for our example, having a party. So I, I love this project. The end result, the end product is an end of course party. So maybe you teach all semester, you have this project going on, and at the end of semester, you have an end of course party, which is kind of created and organized by your students. Then the audience for that is the, the students themselves, their family and friends, maybe students from other classes and schools. And the venue will be, for example, a classroom or a, a larger room in a school. I quite like to write a project description. So uh, here's a project description. The children will prepare for and have a party. Main vocabulary areas are parties, food and drink, animals, people, and parts of the body. The project's end product is the party itself and friends and family are invited. Uh, and how do I integrate my, this project into the curriculum? Well, I imagine I'm teaching in a school from Monday to Friday, right? In that situation, every Thursday will be project day. 
Activities will aim to review and use language from the course book students have recently completed. So, oh, this is, um, you can't really see very clearly here. Uh, the res has gone down. But this is an example of a project plan. Now, you start with the end. The end product is party time, the party itself. But along the way, you, you have lessons, basically. So one lesson, you'll, you'll um, what's this? Party masks. So here's the language, grammar to be, demonstrative pronouns. Uh, students will learn vocabulary, animals. They'll make party masks of animals, like tigers, zebras or zebras, if you like, lions and so on. And I've got my listening and speaking skills here. And then uh, let's take a look at old MacDonald had a zoo. So here's a, in each one, I, I'm going to zoom in on, on this lesson, 1.5. And, and I know this, you can, this is really terrible res, but uh, resolution, but party song old MacDonald had a zoo. So in this lesson, students basically learn animals like tiger, like bear, wolf, zebra, and they will learn what noise each animal makes. Tiger, roar, uh, wolf, howl, something like that. And then uh, students will sing a song. Old MacDonald had a zoo, E-I-E-I-O, and on that zoo he had a zebra, E-I-E-I-O, with her here and that kind of thing. So that's a simple lesson, and you can imagine how that could be an English lesson. And what happens is you just have a series of these lessons. So students make party masks in one lesson, they sing a party song in another lesson, they learn a party game in another lesson, and so on. And at the end, they do all of these things come back into the party. They'll sing that party song again, they will, uh, they will wear their party hats. So that is a series of worth of, um, of linked activities that students will do. Okay, and so this is, um, I think, you know, for, for younger students, especially if you've never done a project before, uh, you know, you break it down into different activities or different lessons, and it's just a bit easier to handle. Okay, and so um, that's, that is a bit different from task-based learning, as someone said, and uh, but it involves, you know, a challenging problem. I think so. Students are the challenges to prepare for a successful party. The public product is the party itself. And they're learning certainly skills along the way. Now, there's not much research involved. So it's not very, very projecty. But still, um, if you feel your students are too young and maybe not able to carry out independent research, uh, this is an option for you. Okay, overall, the activities or lessons you have should provide students with a good balance of language and skills practice. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the, the most projecty project of all, which is a research-based project. Okay, now, um, a research-based project is a full-on project. It's very, very projecty. And it begins with the planning stage, where students and the teacher plan how they will research, what they will do. Then you have an implementation stage. The implementation stage, that's where students will, in a group, will carry out independent research. And number three, they create an end product. Okay, so this is the, these are the three main stages of research-based project. And what I'm gonna show you is, is how you might plan that. So before you begin a research-based project, the teacher does need to plan very, very carefully. And this is an example of a planning document. The problem or question that students have to answer or solve is this. How do we make our school greener, more environmentally friendly? And so you start off with your, you know, the, the overall objective of the project. And then the next thing you do as a teacher is consider what will the final product be? So I, I've decided it will be a booklet called Let's Make Our School Green, and, and the students doing the project can give it to other students. Uh, next, what resources are necessary? Okay, so you need to arrange the resources. Big question, who will pay for those resources, right? The budget you have will determine if you can do some projects or not. Some cases, maybe students can bring in cameras, right? Or, or some equipment, it depends on your students. 
Next, you will need to put your students into groups and allocate clear roles and tasks. So here are some clear roles and tasks for this project. Okay, you can see those there. Then you have to think about setting clear parameters, particularly with time, right? If you allocate your students 40 minutes in a lesson to do project work, and they say, oh, teacher, can I give us another 10 minutes, please? Don't do that, because what's going to happen is you'll keep extending another 10 minutes and the project will get out of hand, right? It's best to say, no, nope, that's the project I'm over for today. And next time, the students will be a bit quicker and get into, you know, get into the project work more quickly. You can't just keep extending the time. Otherwise, you get into serious dangers. You'll fall behind time. And if you have to teach other things in the curriculum, you, you won't be able to do that. And then finally, uh, the presentation of the booklet. Uh, how can students present their booklet to other classes or parents? Uh, you know, is there going to be a kind of presentation, some kind of handover? Uh, who's the target audience for the presentation? So this is an example of a project planning document for uh, a fairly simple research-based project. Okay. So those are different types of projects. And again, one of my main points today is um, don't, it's not about, for me, this is a project that is not a project. It's about varying degrees on a continuum. Some, some things are more projecty than others, right? But you know what? Maybe you just know that however much you want to, your eight-year-old students, they just can't handle. If they, if, maybe they've never done a project in their mother tongue. So maybe you think it's just too much, or maybe you're not experienced doing projects. So it's best, I think, to start with something a bit less projecty, but it's still good, right? It's still good. Uh, now, uh, let's see, uh, where are we on our agenda? So we've looked at what project-based learning is. We've, we've looked, kind of interrupted a bit, but we, we kind of see the benefits and challenges. And, and the key is to understand that there are different types of project, and you should choose some based on you know, what your students can handle, what you can handle. But now, and I've already touched upon how to implement types of projects, but let's look a bit more at implementing projects. Now, in the focus paper, project-based learning, there are many, many, many tips for how you can implement this approach in your classes, in your schools. Uh, so there are four tips that I've chosen. I, I, what I've done is I've split the tips into, into four tips or keys for success. Some are from the student perspective and some are from teacher's perspective. So let's look at the student's perspective first. And uh, I, I'll, we've lost a little bit of time. So what I'll do is um, I'll let you, ha I'll have to let you read the other ones, but I'll, I'll pick up on a couple of these points. So get the students, uh, let's go with this. Give the students choice. So what do I mean here? Now, I do think generally all of your students, all of the groups, I think they should do the same project, right? So for example, uh, with uh, the project I showed you about five minutes ago, how can we make our school greener? How can we make our school more environmentally friendly, right? That should be the project topic. It shouldn't really change. But I am definitely prepared to give my students choice over what form of final product they want to produce at the end of the project. So I said, make a booklet. But maybe some students are really interested in, I don't know, in, a, in another class, in another topic. Maybe your students are learning about making videos with tablets. So if they want to make a video about how can we make our school greener or a presentation or I don't know, a website, that's fine, right? So I'm perfectly prepared to, to let students choose how, if they want to kind of produce a slightly different end product, as long as the topic's the same and the goals are achieved. So that's an example of giving your students some choice, but within the framework of your topic, all right? And I've kind of just mentioned number four, involve other classes in schools, even as simple as, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm in Taiwan right now, and ta Taiwan, something about Taiwanese, every single Taiwanese person I've ever met is very proud of how delicious Taiwan's fruit is, okay? 
uh, and they'll say, oh, this is the most delicious passion fruit in the world. Oh, we, we have the best oranges in the world. I have to agree, it's very, very good. But and I eat a lot of fruit. Now, let's imagine my, my students in Taiwan are doing that project on how much fruit do we eat every day of the week. Wouldn't it be interesting to compare with another school somewhere else in, in Taiwan or with another school somewhere else in the world? And we can see that in different countries, what fruits do, do people in both countries eat? Say if it's Taiwan and, I don't know, uh, Mexico. Um, do they eat the same fruit or different fruits or, or what? And that, that's very, very interesting to find so students can compare themselves with students somewhere else in a different culture. Okay, um, so that's how we can uh, just think of the student's perspective. For adults, or sorry, not adults, but for teachers rather, here are four keys to successfully implementing projects. Do you know what? They're all really related to the same thing, which is, You've got to be clear in your head, teachers. So just, you know, listen, this is important. You have to be clear in your head about exactly what you want to achieve with the project. And then you have to be very organized. Usually it's backwards planning. So you start with your topic. What do you want to achieve? Then you think of the end product. And then you really think about what are the stages we need to go through in order to get there? How much time do we spend on each stage? It is project planning, right? By its nature so it's clarity of don't go into a project thinking i'm not quite sure what the focus is here it could get messy all right and once you are clear yourself then you will be able to give clear criteria to your students now uh, i think i have about you know 12 or 13 minutes left so i'm going to focus on this number three balance your use of time let's take a look at some points because there are different ways that you can balance your use of time. One, uh, so, you know, how? what are some ways you can balance your use of time? Now, what I mean is balancing the amount of time you spend on your project with the amount of time you spend uh, working elsewhere in your curriculum, right? With your yeah, normal lessons, your typical lessons. So how can you integrate projects into your curriculum, right? Maybe it's a course book curriculum, for example. Maybe you're following a course book. Well, there are many different ways to do it. And which should you choose? This way, that way? Well, it doesn't matter as long as you, you, know, you know the options. So the first option you have up here, you could use consolidation. So you could teach a unit of your course book. And after every unit, you could work on your project. OK, so for me, there's, there's too much of a gap between each stage of a project there. But some schools will do that. On the other hand, uh, so you could integrate it with, with your unit. Uh, some schools will think, well, let's teach all of a course book first and then leave a block of two weeks or something at the end. And then once we finish the whole course book, we can just do our project all together. So that's an option. Uh, you could do have one project day per week, right? When you give students, I don't know, two hours, two, three hours to work on the project, a nice chunk. You could do. 30 minutes every day. 30 minutes every day, your students really need to get started very quickly because one issue with 30 minutes per day is it can take 10 or 15 minutes for a group to decide, oh, what did we do yesterday? And it takes them so lot much time to warm up. Um, right. Next, you could link your project to your course book. So if you're reading about fruit in your course book, you could do a project to extend that uh, about fruit. Or you could decide to take a refreshing break from your course book and your project is totally different for variety. OK, there's no right answer. It depends on you and your situation. OK, so don't be confused. Just, you know, make make as long as you know your options, you can make a decision there. Now, what you will find is that many of Oxford University Press's English language teaching course courses will have project suggestions which link to and expand from the main course content. So for example, this is Oxford Discover Futures. This is level one. This is a book for secondary, usually, and maybe upper primary to teens. And the students, what, what's happened is they've just finished studying a pair of units. Uh, the first unit in the pair was called, What Do We Need to Survive? And the second unit was called, How Can We Live With, with Less? 
And then after these two units, there's a project. And the project takes what students have learned and extends it. So let's see if we can zoom in here on the project page. So at the top, what do you see? You see project task and straight away, we know the end product, the public product. It's giving a presentation. And then this is research. So work in groups and give a presentation about recycling household waste. Research recycling household waste and recycling in the future on the internet. And there will be tips in the teacher's book to help students with this. And the students must prepare slides and a script for your presentation and then give the presentation to, your, to the class. So that's a project description. Now for support, students can look at an example project. So here's an example project. Uh, and you can see, see the language incorporated here. These are the slides. Okay, and students do a kind of an exercise where they, well, first read the instructions for the project task above, what's the main aim? And two, study the presentation slides, match these statements with the slides. So that's a bit of a language practice. And, and it shows the students how simple all they have to say when they make something, maybe not for Bristol, maybe for their hometown, they just need kind of one or two lines like this to explain what they found, right? So there's a, a nice model to follow. And there are also um, tips for searching online. Okay, so you can look for links in course books at which can help you to implement your projects and, and tie them to you know, your, your syllabus. Okay, now for further reading, let me see. Um, well, I'll just give you the further reading. Why not? So let's see um, what Peggy, the moderator, is going to do now. Is she's going to, in the chat box, look out for her pasting a link. And this link, this link, there we go. I can see it on my screen now. And if you click on that link, you will download. I mean, it's perfectly free. All right, so you will download a position paper called Project Based Learning. Now, it will expand on all of the points, most of the points that I've, uh, I've talked about today. And what I added in, because uh, you know, I'm aware many teachers don't have time for a full project based learning approach, I added in my suggestions for types of projects just to give you a bit more choice. And I don't want you, I don't want teachers to feel pressured that their projects must be the perfect project, right? But just try to get as many of those key elements in as you can, uh, according to your students' needs and their, their language levels and their previous experience of projects and their age as well. Okay, so click on that. You may have to, um, you know, if you're not a member of the Oxford Teachers Club, you will be asked for a name and password, but that's all free. Okay, and take a look there. So there we go. I, I think I've got uh, three or four minutes where I can answer some questions. So uh, what's happened is my moderators have very kindly typed some questions into a separate chat box that I can see. Let me read them. Now we have a question from Athanasia Amanatidou. Okay, now okay, sorry uh, if I got that wrong. Right, that looks Greek to me. So. I tried my best with the pronunciation. Question from Athanasia. Could we claim that it, project-based learning, could we claim that project-based learning encourages the creation of communities of practice? I'm going to say yes. You know, I mean, what is a, a group? Especially a group is a, is a type of community, isn't it? And students are practicing many skills together, including language negotiating teamwork so uh, you know I'm not sure from a from a theoretical point exactly how you define communities of practice but well, I'm gonna say yes for that next question we have is from Alexander Antonio Abela or Abelar Abel, um, question any recommended general time frames say four weeks for a particular project topic I'm gonna say no um, because it really depends. So, so Alexander, it's a great question. It's a very practical question, but it depends what type of project you go for, right? So, so what I've tried to suggest is, uh, so for me, often I'm constrained. I can't really expand the amount of teaching hours I have in a school. For 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 me, I'm not really allowed to do that. I 
I have to work with the amount of hours I have, right? And so I, I look at it as, okay, I have this many hours, I can do this type of project, all right? But if you look at it the other way around, you've got a lot of power in your school. I'm not sure. I mean, I would say that, I mean, again, it depends. It's When you say four weeks, how many hours is that in total, right? So I, I would need to ask some more questions and see what four weeks means in terms of time. Right, but at least my answer, hopefully, in the session is to give you many options you can use. Uh, Agnieszka Ludwinska, question: Could you please explain how project-based learning is different to task-based learning? Uh, yes, uh, I'm going to. There are differences. You could look at a project as a kind of extended task, because there are some similarities, but the similarities are theoretical rather than practical. For example, one similarity is that a task-based project, uh, well, it's usually an information gap, students should, the answer should be something that students don't know. Um, I mean, usually a task is a communicative, um, it's, it's, it's more like a kind of a purposeful real life activity. Okay, okay, one big difference is sustained inquiry. Okay, so a task does, does not necessarily involve sustained inquiry. An information gap activity is a task because students are, are really communicating to find out information which they don't know. So, so that's the quality of a task. Um, but in a, in a project, uh, th there is more research, right? A task, you don't need to do research as such, like go on the internet and do research, a, t a project you do. I think the biggest one though is, um, oh, another one, tasks can be individual. Right, not not always. Projects are usually done by a group, more collaborative. And then the other thing I would say is is, is sustained period of study. Right, that's the big difference. A project has that, a task does not. Now, um, you've actually Agnieszka. What's a really good question is to ask: What is task-based learning? Uh, one of my favorite presentations I've ever seen was by um, applied linguist Rod Ellis. And he's, you know, because actually it's a, it's a really, it's a question many people disagree on. What is task-based learning? He defines five different criteria for task-based learning. It's, it's very interesting. Okay, next. Uh, Noman Amara, what makes a project to be, uh, I, right, so I'm not, there's a question there. I'm not sure I, I kind of understand it. So I'll go to the next one. Aga, where can I find a base of project examples for adult learners? Well, that's a great question. And the answer is, click on the link that Peggy put into the chat box. Okay. And there are, in the um, focus paper from OUP on project-based learning, the final page, you'll get it as a PDF and it will have clickable links. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I have the PDF printed out in front of me. Uh, I have 20 ideas for engaging projects, a link to Edutopia there. I've got um, a project called How Can We Survive on Mars? Uh, so have a look on the paper and click those links. You'll get lots of examples. Okay, so I've answered as many questions as I can in the time.